you know, you know, starting off from like, I don't know where, you know, I don't have a lot of resources, but when we finally got to the pinnacle of our year, which is the Camry, Pastor Bear has two churches. He has the Hagenstadt Church and he has the Heights Church. And so this year, because they were renovating, they decided we're going to share a plot and the pastor has to be there and he has double duty. And so getting to camp was really stressful because for the most part it was just Rachel and I. And Rachel had a car that was driving on a prayer. <laughs> I'm not joking, ask the camera that car died. <laughs> But it, it got there, and like we did a lot of supply trips, and we got there, we realized we had no water, we were missing essential, and I don't know how many times I called Pastor Banner, but like I called him hysterically, like, Pastor Banner, this week is not going to work, I don't have what I need, we can't do this, there's no more money, just stuff like that, and Pastor Banner shows up the day of dropping all supplies, filling both churches, going back and just coming back and like, yeah, every time we thought, you know, it's just us out there, we're walking, going from station to station, who's there waiting next to the president of Cubs or Pastor Man is there? And just every time we thought, you know, we're just gonna be straight out here, Pastor Banner came through for us during that weekend, bringing water and it was hot. Just all the things we forgot, Pastor Banner was there and he had solutions, even though he was busy and he couldn't get there right away because he's not, he's not a genie. But I called him so many times from anyone's phone I can borrow just to say, Pastor Barry, I hope I'm out here and I'm floundering. <laughs> and I got through the most understaffed year with his support. And so I'm confident that we can continue. So on behalf of the adventurers and for the support you've shown us, I want to thank you. But for the family in general, it's gone way beyond, even before he was officially pastor here. I remember it started for me and Bruce, he had a nickname. I used to call him Zerbin because I had the cutest cheeks. And he was so full. They were so full. He had the cutest cheeks and he was like this big. And we went on a, we went on a bus trip together, a church bus trip. And Bruce was there and like he was with Stephen and Junior. I remember like this whole it's just a whole bunch of things. I'm not sharing things with them. Stephen and Junior feel weird. But from then, like, Bruce and I have always had this relationship where we could just talk, and like other people always have this thing where they insert themselves into the conversation and they think they know what we're talking about, and it's never right. And it's usually Stephen Junior. Bruce and I have this thing where he'll come back from breaks or from wherever he is, or, or the weekend he's here, and we'll talk about anything, just like what's going on at school. We'll talk about theology. We'll talk about just all these different things. And like, we'll get heated. We're not, we're not fighting each other. We're just really oh passionate about it. And Stephen Jr. will walk over. Well, if you're talking about this, it's like, that's not what we're talking about. They, they insist. They're correcting us. And we're just sitting there like, now it's so far from the, no, it's so, so far from the white water rafting. Finding out Mrs. Banner trained Bruce how to play board games. <laughs> like, if you want to win, you might want to have Bruce on your team if you just ignore it. But Pastor Banner in the group is the straight shooter, and he'll, he'll warn you ahead of time. So don't play with them because <laughs> the odds are in your favor. <laughs> Mrs. Banner, we got really close because she used to drive me home from school. Good boy. She, and it was an experience because she was helping plan Stephen and Dorcas' wedding. And so said, I'm going to be meeting up with Stephen and Dorcas. She's like, no, Skylar, just come along with me. And Lord, I tell you, I got closer to God every time I was in the car with Mrs. Banner. <laughs> because it's not distracting, it's that she really lets Jesus take the wheel. Distracted. <laughs> I want to thank God for that because she helped me with about things. So Mrs. Banner, like she she trusts me so much, like she has so much she has so much confidence in me that it's like it's really uplifting. And so I really can't thank God enough for that. Like it's not it's a motherly feeling and it's a friendly feeling. It's, an all, it's just so positive. Even like when she's not feeling her best, she does something where she grabs your hand and she holds it tight and it's just, 
but God will get so me through this. Even when she's suffering through these cold, cold winters, it was just one more year, and then I'm going to Florida. But God has her holding on, and for Pastor Banner, there's so many different events he's been through with us. He went snowboarding and skiing with us, whitewater rafting with Bruce as well, and Pastor Banner had his own, like, Pastor Banner and Bruce would take families on the same raft, no. They're there, and they're going their own way, and they have their own style about it. The car trips, everything, but there are several moments that really stick out for me, and like today when you were up there, it just came back to me like, I want to really thank God for just allowing you to, like it really is like a shepherd, that's someone you can turn to because the first moment was when we found out, we really didn't know what was Scott when we first got the lupus, and I'll never forget because it was a really hard time. I wanted to be with Scott, and I wanted to be with Steve or just my mom or anyone, but I couldn't because there was a limit to who could go in the room. And my mom called me, and she said, I couldn't call Steven because Steven, I guess, pulled up the side of the room because he had gotten the same news he was with the And she called me, and she was like, Scott finally broke because he hadn't cried the whole time. He was just going through it. And I was just at home, and there was no one to even talk to. She called me and said, I can't speak, but Scott has to have a blood transfusion. And like, he finally cried about it. And she was crying, like, my mom had to cry the whole time. And I didn't know what to do. And so, I picked the phone and I called Pastor Banner, and he prayed me right there, because like, it was just so such a helpless feeling knowing that you can't be there, like, no matter how different Steven Scott and I are, we're just, it's just Steven Scott, Skyler, and Victoria, when her show left up, it was just, Thank you. It's just you knowing that at that time where, like I was saying, there are a lot of pastors in my family, there are a lot of people like that in my family, it's just at that moment, it's just, I had this guy to call the pastor Banner, and like, it was a blessing, and he prayed with me, and he talked with me, and then he was there when Scott, like when we went to the hospital, he was there to be with Scott. And the second time, it was like, every time it was just like such a bleak moment, my cousin had a stillbirth, and even though they weren't in church, they still had been raised in bed like, my cousin, even though she had temporarily lost her mind, she only wanted an adventist pastor dealing with her baby. <coughs> and so I was calling, and Pastor Barry was he was no, he had jury duty, I believe. He had jury duty. And so I found another pastor to do the service, but Pastor Barry still drove to the house that night because Tanisha hadn't spoken with anyone. And when she finally was speaking to everyone, she asked Pastor Banner to come in and just pray for her kids. Because she felt like there was just so many demons around her, just, and she couldn't, she couldn't focus. And Pastor Banner came in, and he prayed for them. And like after that, like she got back her right mind. It was just every single time, there's a sense of, like there's just like a fragment in the family that needs something. It's been such a blessing knowing that I can pick up the phone and call you, and even if you can't make it that moment, you still can do it again. I really, really appreciate it. Yeah. And so thank you so much for helping this. I'm not going to say be the glue because that's Jesus, but just being a steady point that we can reach out to it, all of you. And Bruce, those moments that you've been at your concert are lifting us all together have been a very big blessing for all the milestones these last 10 years for my family. So thank you so much. I tell you, is anybody here a salesman for Kleenex or tissue or anything like that? Because uh, you just have to wait until after the Sabbath and you'll make a killing. <laughs> now, we're going to call on a couple of children, okay, being led by Sister Mylin. Okay, come on, guys. Here we go. Representatives of children ministry. Hi, Sabbath Pastor. Um, every Sabbath, I have only two um, faithful students here at the <laughs> table. So every Sabbath, so I have coming back there and pass by. I have to, I'm happy I have two faithful. But anyway, we have a little thing for you, Pastor and Sister Lydia. So, um, so you're going to say thank you. Wow. 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 W
Oh. That was a nice <laughs> idea.